Hello. Thanks for joining us here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we we're excited to have you. You've been busy this last month. Like I, we've seen, like you've got a lot going on, and that's exciting. Like Thanks. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. I recorded for a game like a few weeks ago, and I'm just, ah, I'm, so, I'm so stoked. I cannot wait See, for them to announce it. Uh, normally, I'd ask for details, but I, I know you, you, you guys can't. You can't. The, the tease is good. The tease is good. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely into video games for sure. Yeah. So, uh, are are you into video games? Do you play a lot? Well, I do, but the game I play the most is Skyrim. Oh, oh thank you. Yes, oh, I've got the dragon like right there. Yes, like we both have the the Alduin statue, and oh! yeah, it's By great. Far, I'm get. I'm gonna eventually. Uh, the plan is to get the tattoo right here and have that complete my arm sleeve. <laughs> nice i loved that game yes we, we've put hundreds if not thousands of hours into it and maybe only yeah. beat it like twice <laughs> because oh, that's what you well, do in skyrim great. you don't need to beat it to have fun i have been doing right. a heck ton of side quests i have not beaten the main quest yet right yeah. well that that's a topic <laughs> of one of our conversations yes <laughs> when when i first came out i bought it i was so excited because i loved the franchise and I did not. Th- I what I normally do is just go through all the side quests, and it was before all the patches came out. And I set off a trap that was for a main quest. And so when I went to start playing the main quest, I couldn't do it because the trap had already set off, so it wouldn't trigger <laughs> yeah. the plot line. And so I had to start over after a hundred hours because they hadn't had the patch yet. <laughs> and then I put another hundred hours into it, and my PS3 died. And so <laughs> I'm uh storied, storied. <laughs> i would cry <laughs> yeah I, the I've, good news is i got to play the game again i guess yeah, i mean yeah. start over start Different a new choices. character uh i ah, i would still though <laughs> i what i did in the beginning was i leveled up an alchemy so that i could right um, yeah you know level up and then make some money from selling the potions right and that's how i was able to afford the the house my first house in the game yeah. i wish i could afford a house in real life oh that'd be great so you're also a musician which we obviously yes. love music and you do a lot of stuff on your youtube page doing covers and stuff how and i, I listened to a few tracks today that are originals how much of the writing do you uh, my original songs what do you all write on all what of it you, i i mean like what do you, do you write on the guitar or do you write on the piano uh, well, i um basically i find an instrumental that i like and then i kind yeah. of write to the instrumental but of course nice. you know you're off because i don't want to i don't want to you know i don't i'm not going to steal someone's work but i i need right. i need some sort of music to write to so i can come up with my own melody and so i'll listen yeah. to a few songs that i like and i'll write to those and uh, switch it up a bit and that's usually how i yeah. i find melodies for my well, lyrics. nice i love that about the music community because there are a lot of things on youtube that people will post out like for like free game like you take it use it make it your own and it's a, it's mm-hmm. a really cool sort of community um your your voice is fantastic and it plays so well when you're doing your voice work how much of the musical aspect helped you to become a voice artist well it definitely helped with breath support right definitely for sure because there are some there are some moments when i'm in the booth yeah and i'm like oh if i didn't have a singing background i would not be able to hold that out as long <laughs> as i did oh boy there are a lot of moments like that so definitely breath support and also musicality definitely yeah. like it strengthens my reads exponentially and um, sure. oh, those I bet. Are the two main things yeah. so uh, following up with that what what is some of your favorite music right okay, so i listen to a lot of pop rock but mostly anime soundtracks <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. there's nothing wrong with that man yeah, I, anime I, soundtracks bop man <laughs> I think there's such great music. Um, and I think my all-time favorite song is Unravel from Tokyo Ghoul. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, we're both big fans of like the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack. Yes. Because we grew up being in jazz band and oh, stuff like that. Close to my heart. And then <laughs> what was it? Uh, Trigun, the band that they use 
not try again. No, what am I thinking of? What what, what fully coolie the band? Yeah, the pillows. Fully the pillows. I just fell in love with that and and J Rock and all that stuff. It, it opened up a brand new world to me. Oh yeah. Me. Nice. Oh, so what that. what are some of your favorite animes? Oh my god. Oh, I mean, do so we have enough time? Let's start. Do back we have enough time? From the beginning. <laughs> from <laughs> number one, Code Geass. Ooh, oh, that's a good one. Yes. Phenomenal. A masterpiece. Yes. For sure. Yeah, number one's Code Geass. Number two, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Brotherhood. Yeah. Thank you. I got to make the distinction. Uh. <laughs> it's so good. The villains. Oh, the villains are just so oh, it's amazing. Fantastic. Way more than the original. Like, the Brotherhood villains are just far better than than the ones in the the, or, oh, the original sure. see i i first started watching the original one on adult swim yeah. and i i fell in love with it and you know it got up to like episode 10 or something and i started buying the manga and so i read up on the manga and then i'm like okay i can't wait for this part to happen and i'm like wait a second yeah. what is going on and so i completely stopped watching the original version because i i was like i hate this i hate this yeah, this is not what i wanted the manga to the original anime it's just it falls so flat because the manga is so good and then of course they came out with brotherhood which is based yeah. off the manga. oh so yes far oh. Better. see but that's what you get for having expectations okay oh <laughs> <laughs> no we oh, we man. love i i think uh growing up you know, you you come come home from middle school at our age, and there's the Dragon Ball Z, and, and the you know Rurouni Kenshin, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, and that sort of sparked it. And then the stuff they're doing nowadays, it feels so much like that. There's so much content coming out, and now the the straight to dub simul dub. Oh um, man, simul dub is so nice. On. I love it. <laughs> and and the, there's another renaissance happening in anime it's beautiful yes and some of those shows like the uh, my hero academia just captures mm -hmm. that same feeling that i had growing up listening to it and now i get to relive that and yeah. hopefully someday my my kids will give a fuck about what i'm into <laughs> probably not I'm, probably I'm not what mad. you're into but, but they'll find something and they'll be like hey dad i discovered this and just don't tell them that you found it 20 years ago no. <laughs> um so speaking of my hero i actually just started um reading the manga for that and uh i literally just got to the part where 13 comes in so uh right. very excited about that so if if you personally were to have a quirk and what what would your quirk be? And then now this is gonna sound silly because it's I mean it's meant to sound silly, but I'm oh. also being serious. <laughs> An anxiety jetpack so that I can fly away from my problems as <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't quite nice. be a hero then. <laughs> well, I mean hey, I feel like for the most part. I could use it for good. Yeah, you could be the support. You could hop in, grab somebody, and fly out, oh. save them. Yeah. Here's the thing. The anxiety jetpack, hey, it takes off, but I can control it if I need to. I can go back, right? <laughs> right. That's right. That, that's, that's right. I like that. Yeah, trouble gotta, if needed, you know? You I'm learn to anxious, overcome. Boom, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you're, in a, you're in a weird meeting or something. It's just like, mm, I'm not feeling this, guys. <laughs> exactly. Like, bye, like, guys. You just got to hope a window's open or else... <laughs> You're going to do some damage to the building. See, that's that's where you get the costume that lets you break through the roof. Insurance will take care of it. It's fine. See, <laughs> I, I loved the idea of the quirks. It, it really brings that superhero aspect to the anime. Were you a fan of any superhero or comic books? Or I mean, there were a plethora of superhero shows when we were growing up. Well, I mean, I just, I love the, Mar the Marvel universe. Yeah. I love a lot of those of it was heroes, and I feel yeah, I that's much more a very real. Thing to say because everyone loves Marvel, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. No, uh, I think Marvel was much more real. It was much more easy to relate to, you know, because their characters had a bunch of flaws, wherein mm -hmm. you know, they weren't all Superman, who was just perfect in every way. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yep, there, exactly. there was depth to character there, so I can appreciate that for sure. Definitely. What Definitely. was um. 
I guess when you started doing the anime process, were you in Texas going to the studios and stuff or were you doing remote work? Uh, I started doing this about seven years ago. Yeah. So I would go into the studios for it. I never did anime remotely. It did was you... never really a thing that you could do remotely until now. Right. It kind yeah. of it forced you to have to. Yep. Did you, uh, who was like the first person you met that you were really geeked out about? Oh my God. Ian Sinclair. Oh yeah. He that dude. is a phenomenal actor. That guy. <laughs> he could make any role good like there's this one character his character in black clover for yeah. example <laughs> i hated that character in the japanese i hated him he's <laughs> annoying and i was like ah, i don't like him but then i watched the dub because i watched both sub and dub okay. so I in the dub and i heard ian's voice and he just oh, <laughs> he made the character lovable i was yeah. like how did you do that he's, he is magic ian is magic he is literally <laughs> my favorite male voice actor ever for sure uh well that brings up another topic of sub versus dub is a heated conversation in the community do you have a preference you say you listen to both do you or does it really depend on the performance given it depends because let's be real there are some bad dubs out there yeah <laughs> yeah there yeah uh, so i watch both but i mean in all honesty i prefer dubs as long as as long as it's good yeah I'm, yeah I'm really picky. i mean me being a performer and being in the industry myself i yeah. am for picky so <laughs> I, I would rather not have to read the subtitles i would rather just be able to to watch the beautiful animation and not have to focus on reading mm -hmm. if right. i'm going to read it i'm going to pick up the manga yeah and also yeah. if i want to multitask i can do that if it's a dub that's that's my biggest part is multitasking especially if you got little especially as a dev around. yep <laughs> as a parent yeah. who can't read they're not gonna <laughs> want to read subtitles they can't read so it's good you know, for them to watch you know an english dub you know uh, or a dub in their language yeah and also for kids with dyslexia anyone with dyslexia my brother has dyslexia, right. and so it's it's nice that you know anyone with dyslexia hey they may not be able to read the subs well but hey yeah. you don't need subtitles when there's a dub i'm just a super slow reader like I'm, not, <laughs> I'm good at reading you know but i'm i'm so slow at it and they just especially when you get on to the streaming services i don't know if you oh man some of those subtitles Hulu move fast or netflix is they'll the, the for some reason the subtitles it feels like they lag in yeah. a weird spot and then they try and catch up with themselves and then you miss half of it by the, <laughs> by the time you're going through so a, a bit of a follow up to, you know, working in the booth. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask is, do you have any like fun, weird or crazy uh, like on the job moments that have happened? Something silly that happened? Locked yeah. in a room. <laughs> I mean, there was one time um, when the sound engineer laughed, was laughing so hard he passed out. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. <laughs> so funny. But like, no, he, as he was going down, you know, he, he, he went down and it just ker -ker plunk. And then when he woke up, he goes, oh, I heard music. <laughs> and, and then Sonny Strait, who was the director um, of the session, he was saying, yeah, your head hit my ukulele as you were going down. <laughs> Funny. But there's also for me specifically in the booth, one time I recorded, recorded a line that wasn't scripted so that they could play it for the actors who were supposed to record after me. And we call those bombs, <laughs> call them booth bombs. Nice. So when you record the line, you're, you know, you record the line you're supposed to, and they right. put it on file, but then you record something funny that the engineer will play for the actors who are coming in to record <laughs> that scene later. So instead of hearing a serious line that fits the scene, they hear a meme or a joke or something completely out of character yeah. and it trips them up and it's hilarious. And one time I was recording for a boy. I was recording for a boy who was in a hot tub with a few other guys in the scene. And instead of saying my lines, I, I sang the meme. Few bros chilling in a hot tub, five feet apart, cause they're not gay. 
<laughs> and I said few bros because there was multiple bros in the hot tub. Oh, and to man. my surprise, it fit the animated mouth flaps. Did it, it? perfectly with the animation <laughs> when I sang it. And it was just, it was absolute perfection. And I heard from the director later on that I managed to get a lot of great reactions from the actors when they heard the bomb. So I'm probably. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, You've done, a, you're, you're attached to a lot of projects now. Are there any projects that you would love to be a part of that you haven't gotten the chance to are there any like is there like a dream job for you i think the series that i want to be a part of has officially ended i believe i could be wrong but who knows who knows you never know but i would love to be a part of the digimon world and you oh keep- yeah because yeah. you know with those shows and I'm, I'm in pokemon which was a dream come right to- yes but i would also love to be in a few other shows that i grew up with and that's digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh. definitely well you know they're always bringing stuff back well i know Yu-Gi-Oh. i know Oh, like Yu-Gi-Oh they've Yu-Gi-Oh had still going on yeah yeah i'm actually I- surprised that they just keep coming out with more and more things when i saw them on motorcycles i thought that was going to be the end of it <laughs> <laughs> I love you say I oh god I love the characters so much um yes I but here's the thing they dub it in New York I'm not in New York oh do they oh I know I don't know how that well you know what we'll see with, with, with what's been going on yeah. yeah by by force and maybe that gives you more opportunities down the line <laughs> yeah, I would hope so that'd be nice so you You've also been a very, you know, adding on to the projects, you've also been very active in theater as well, Um, as as many voice actors we've learned have. Um, What led you to kind of go into voiceover and do you kind of still do live shows from time to time? I I actually, I've always loved acting. And so I just, that's how I, you know, got into theater a little bit of on stage, a bit of on camera, but how I got into voiceover specifically, I actually won a voice acting competition and that's how I stumbled into the world of voice acting. Um, Todd Haberkorn was judging the competition and I won that contest and through that I got an audition at Funimation and then the ball kept rolling from there. So you're doing the the continuation, I guess, of uh inuyasha which is super exciting because i that's another one we I, we, we grew, grew up, up with, with yeah watching oh, guys i was so stoked when i got cast i not gonna lie i auditioned for it and yeah. i did not think i would book it uh because well oh you know how this industry is you know <laughs> Sometimes you think to yourself, ah, I know how this director works. They're probably going to cast someone else, you know? Right. Um, I was, but, you know, I did my best either way. And I was like, you know what? You know, as an actor, this is just how it is. You audition, you audition, and you hope you book. And, you know, you just have fun with what you're given. And so yeah. that's what I did. I had fun with the audition. And I, I, I binged the entire the entirety of Inuyasha. Oh, All, man. Every episode, <laughs> yeah. every movie. And um, so I was ready for this role. I was yeah. ready. And so I'm glad it worked out. With Inuyasha, with all the stuff that you've voiced in, if you could pick a show that you could get stuck in, even if it's one that you don't voice in, what, what, what kind of universe, what world would you want to be part of? What do, you, what do you think you would excel at? Fairy tale. I love Fairy that. Fairy tale. Cool. It was, it was actually the first anime I was in. And I was a huge fan of the show before I was even a part of it. Yeah. And I also, I just love the idea of a world filled with magic and guilds comprised of mages and bards. And it just sounds like so much yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. That anime it, is fantastic. It, it's kind so of. So what, what, would, what would be your specialty if, if you were stuck in fairy tale? You know, how everybody has like their own magical specialty. I feel like it would be fire magic. I just. I feel yes. it in my bones. Same as in like, you know, the world of Avatar. I feel like I would be a yeah. fire leader. Oh my gosh, that is I'm just very lot. fiery. I feel yeah. like I feel like it would be very fitting. <laughs> so being, being as multifaceted as you are, do you have a artistic expression that you prefer most, whether it's acting, voice acting, or music? 
acting is my favorite. Is I love getting to step into the shoes of someone <laughs> else and escape my reality. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I know you you have uh, some classes coming up. Um, what kind of stuff do you go over in your classes? Okay, so here's the spiel. <laughs> like, because there's, there's a multitude of things that I can cover. Um, and kind of the slogan I feel that fits this class well is, it's all about navigating the industry because that is an art in itself. And it's not, it's not really an acting technique class per se. I'm, I mean, unless, you know, you're talking audition methods and stuff, but in that case, yeah, technique. But I basically, it's a class that provides a chance to learn more about the voiceover industry, how it works, studios, cool. and the business of acting with your voice and you, yeah. you know, talk about red flags, things to avoid. Um, I can teach uh, voiceover audition methods. Um, and there's also different areas of voiceover that, you know, there's a difference in performance techniques for various forms of voiceover. And that's definitely something that needs to be covered, you know, in when you're being coached in that area. So and learning marketing strategies and just the, I guess there's just a whole, there's a bunch of stuff that I usually cover depending on, I kind of gear it towards the student. Like, like, what do you want to know? What are your questions about this industry? Um, where are you at right now in your journey in your voiceover journey? What can we do to help you go further? And so, yeah, just a I, bunch of stuff. I like that. The red like flags that. one, I think is a really important one because oftentimes when classes are being taught, that's something that gets missed with any sort of classes. Like look out for these things because they'll fuck you over or. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there's I know. a race in scams. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, here's what you need to look for to avoid. Here's what you need to avoid. Um, like I, I was just, after a while, I was so tired of seeing people getting scammed yeah. by amateurs that actually have no experience in this industry whatsoever, uh, right. promoting classes and stuff. And I was like, excuse me, I, I don't, who are you? Who are you? So after a while of people <laughs> being like, yeah, um, I took a class with so-and-so, but I didn't really learn anything. And I was like, oh, well, who is it? And they tell me, and I'm like, who's that? Like, girl, you need to Google this dude. <laughs> Does anything come up when you search him up on IMDb? No? Oh, and you went to him for animation and video game coaching and he has no credits whatsoever? Okay. Right. I mean, that's the kind uh, of person that I'm I'm gonna go to. Book, what makes you think he's gonna help you book? <laughs> See, those are the people you go to learn what not to do. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, there's so many people out there teaching incorrect information and even outdated information. So it's really right because here's the thing trends are always changing in this industry. oh yeah you need to learn from someone who's booking now not someone who booked 15 years ago and no longer books anymore trends Definitely. are always changing you got to learn from someone who's able to book now always look them up on imdb when was the last time they booked a gig how many gigs did they manage to book each year are they booking consistently these things matter sounds like your 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 class is Perfect <laughs> for, for people. Uh, just honestly, I just want to help people. And there have been a few people that, a few students that were fed incorrect information from yeah. other people. And I just have to, you got to steer them in the right direction. Make sure, sure they don't, you know, <laughs> shoot themselves in the foot before it's even in the door. So we want to avoid that. So yeah, wait, right. wait until you step in the door to shoot your foot. <laughs> no, so we already asked you about the, what world you would want to be stuck in as an anime actor. Uh, if you had to choose a voice or a character to be stuck as, like somebody you already voice, oh. what would you choose? Oh, that's if I could, if I could be the character. Yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and stick you. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, there's a lot. No, there's, there's you've done so many cool oh, characters. I'm a singer, <laughs> and I'm Love Live Sunshine. Yoshiko is in a band and she gets to sing and, and dance and I and I love that I really miss that actually so maybe I would say love life sunshine that cool that, um, world nice and that character right yeah. on so I, I do have a little bit of a follow-up with uh like the the difference you know video games and and anime do you prefer the dynamic when you record for video games or anime or is it very similar to you 
there's a different process with recording for animation, specifically anime dubbing and video games. For most video games, when you don't have to match the timing of, um, of a different language, like um, mm -hmm. ARPG, when you don't have to match the timing, which is, you know, similar to anime. Um, I really like the freedom behind video game voiceover because as an actor, you know, and as a voice actor, you know, there's so many more ways to read a line than one. Yeah. There are oh, yeah. so ways you could read things. You could choose a different word to emphasize. You can lean on this word, elongate this word, um, take your time, add more beats in a line. Like there's just so many possibilities to differentiate different lines. And so with video games, that you typically ask for an AB or an ABC. And so what that means is they want more than one take. So yeah. you'll go throughout, you go boom, 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 boom. You go down the line, say your lines. If, if the director says, hey, give me an AB, you'll do two takes of that line, two takes of that line and just go all the way down. And it's nice to have the freedom to show them, hey, there's more than one way I could read this line. Here are all the ways that I can do it. And then you give them variety to choose from. And honestly, I love being able to do that. Yeah. With, an, with anime, it's more, you do it. And then the director's like, either the director's like, okay, yeah, that fits the flaps. That sounds good. We're good. Let's move on. They kind of move, you know, <laughs> move on, right? If it fits the flaps and it sounds good, they move on. But with video game, it's, it's video game voiceover. I feel it gives you more freedom to experiment and give them more options and i don't know i just really like that it's just like hey here's an abc here's three takes of this line all completely different reads moving on to the next line here's three other ways i could read this line too like i don't know it kind of gives, gives me a chance to show off a bit yeah yeah show off well, and i and honestly it, i like that kind of gives yeah. a little little bit of uh surprise for you too if you go back and play the game later it's like ooh, which one did they use yes, <laughs> you I know being able to do that i love i love getting to see like ooh, which one did they go with and sometimes they use all of them like when it comes to attack efforts yeah uh, mm -hmm. it's best for them to use all of them so that you don't hear the same sound effect over and over again when you're swinging a sword or something right so so you you mentioned um at the beginning that you recently got to to voice in pokemon if you had to pick a starter, what would it be? Well, any of the fire starters. Thank um, you. But I love yeah, Linton. Uh, Linton is great. Yeah, but also I, I loved the evolution because it's just Luchador Cat. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, honestly, I just like the, the cuteness in the beginning. That is really buff. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I really liked uh, Score Bunny, the, the new fire starter. He was. Okay. He, Fantastic. Same. I love Score Bunny, but I also love Raboots. He's just like yeah. super cool. He looks like he's got his hands in his pockets and he's just chilling. And I'm just like, I love him. <laughs> oh, he's man. great. Oh man. I, I honestly picked Score Bunny because of the trailer where he just hops around and catches everything on fire. He was so irresponsible. Um <laughs> so I just I I loved that. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna pick the irresponsible fire bunny. This perfect. <laughs> so thank so. thanks for joining us tonight. It, it really was a pleasure. Absolutely. So. It was great talking with you guys. Have a great night. Thank you as you well. Too. Bye. Hey, this is Felix, and you've been listening to the Two Dads at a Podcast Interview Series. For more content, like and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitch, and everywhere podcasts are available. To help us bring you more of these amazing interviews, you can support us on our Patreon. Just follow the links below, and thanks for watching.